Hello crafters and welcome to the Picture to Page Winter Online Show brought to you by From Picture to Page Paper Craft Shows where we nurture your creati creativity with in-person and online events. I'm Jenny and so I'm so happy to be your host for this the final season for today. The Winter Online Show Craft Show includes lots of fantastic demonstrators by our talented crafters and retailers. For all the details, as well as sneak peeks of demonstrations, why not head over to the Picture to Page website from picture to page and beyond.com.au. While you are there, you can get up to date to, with our upcoming in-person craft shows and join our mailing list. So you will be the very first to get all P2 Picture to Page news along with some special features that are only offered to our mailing list community. Now, whether you're watching us live or catching us on the replay, we would love to know that you are there. So pop into the comments and say hello and ask any questions you may have. We will do our best to ask the crafter these questions during the session and they will definitely pop back into the comments after the session is finished to answer any questions we didn't get to. Now, I'm very excited to be able to introduce you to Julie Hill from Handmade Haven. Hi, Julie. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Now, Julie, you just started this business. and How did that happen? Uh, so, yeah, I've just started Handmade Haven back in April this year, and it came about because prior to that, I was with Kazaz as a consultant for over 10 years and as many of you will have know they cancelled all our agreements as at the end of March and I thought about things and what I might do and decided that to continue running the weekend events that I currently run and didn't really want to join one of the other businesses, um, the other direct selling mm -hmm. companies so I decided to go independent and set up my own business which gives me the advantage of being able to pick and choose what products I stock and what I use and that sort of thing so it's been really good. Fantastic. And you um, run these, I can see people in the background, and so you run yeah. these craft show, uh, craft days? I do. Once a month um, we get together. We're in Morwell in uh, Gippsland in Victoria, and I run at the Goyle Guide Hall here every month, and we have a three-day craft weekend, so people can come along and craft with whatever sort of crafts they're into. It could be scrapbooking, card making, art journaling, mixed media, sewing, crocheting, Whatever, uh, it's open to all crafts, all crafters. Um, I run card making and scrapbooking workshops on the Friday and tomorrow I've got another lady who's coming in and running an art journal class and I'm currently looking for other people to come and do things over the weekend. So you can choose to do the classes or you can just come and work on your own projects. And then I also have a pop-up shop that's open to people calling in on the Saturday as well. Um, so those who don't want to necessarily come and craft can just pop in and see what I've got in stock. And um, of course I've got a website as well. Fantastic. That's really great. And what are you going to show us today? Today we're going to be looking at some stencil stamp and die sets from Couture Creations. Um, so a lot of people have used stamps and dies before, but the addition to these ones is that they've got the stencil in there, which helps colour the image perfectly. Um, it also includes the shading. So if you're not that good at colouring and not that good at picking you know, the shading, what area should be darker and what should be lighter, these make it really, really easy for you. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you have to do. <laughs> well, I'm going to get you to uh, change your camera over and then yep, we'll join sure. you for the demo, okay? Uh, yep. Oh, this is, sounds really interesting. I can't wait to see what we're going to be doing with uh, Julie and um, stencils and sets. And, um, and it's great that she started her own shop up there in Morwell. Uh, in, for people up in the country area, it's great for them. I think you're, Julie, you're ready? Yes, so I'm just going to go over and pass you over to Julie now. You're right, Julie? Okay, thanks. Okay, we yep, might be a little Jenny. bit close. Hang on, maybe I'll just see if I can change it. No, no, I'll see if I can change. Um, that's all right. That's probably all we're going to need. That's all right. You start and I'll adjust. <laughs> no worries. So this is uh, one of the sets that we're working with. So this is a different one to what I'm using today. But you can see down here it's got the flower in the corner and that's what it makes. And they come with the stamp set with some words as well. And then in the background here is your stencils. 
So I'll get that out of the way. And these are the cards that I've actually taught this afternoon using the stamp and die set that I'm going to demonstrate. And that's a scrapbook layout that's also in them. And that, so that's another picture of what we're going to make. So to start with, what I've done is I have already pre-die cut the image. Now I'm starting with the die cutting first, which I know may seem a little bit odd to a lot of people, but you'll see at the end when I do the stamping uh, why I've done that, because sometimes it can be a bit hard to line up. And I also put some die cut and bond on the back, so they're basically your double-sided tape, but the big wide roll one. Sorry, and I'm just peeling that off. So the back is going to be sticky, which is just going to hold it in place while I'm doing the stenciling. So I'm just sticking that onto a non-stick craft sheet, which will then be able to peel it off again once we're finished. Now the stencils, you can see here, they have these really weird looking shapes to them. That's because they only colour the bits that you want. So this one here, you can see this bit here is going to be the stem, and then these bits are the flowers. So you'd simply line that up. Now you can stamp the image first and then line it up to colour the stamped image. I'm just going to fix that up. It's gone a little bit crooked when I've stuck it down. Oops. Get in the right spot. And this board that I'm walk, working on is also from Couture Creations and it's a magnetic workplace. So you can use your little magnets and it holds your place for you. It makes it really easy to work on. And I'm just using Distress Inks. So this is the vintage photo Distress Ink and a little blending brush. And I'm just going to blend along here. Now, you don't necessarily have to blend with a brush. You could still colour this with whatever markers you like to use. Um, or you could paint through it. You know, whatever medium that you want to colour with is fine. So that's the brown. That's a tiny brush. <laughs> These brushes are great. They come in a huge range of sizes, like there's 10 in the pack and then you get different sizes. Mm. Um, this one is a round, little round head, which I find really good to use. And that's what we're going to use on this. So now this stencil, then you move it. I'll just work out where the right way around is. <laughs> and it then lines up flowers. And you can see that it lines up perfectly with your flowers. So Julie, um, um, Helen's asking what the set is called. Uh, so the sets are called, that's a really good question, <laughs> they do have a name and it is, the one that I showed you is called Wild Water Peppers, oh, Flourish and Thrive is the range um, and this one is Wild Water Peppers um, and the one that I'm using is a, I can't remember what it's called and I don't have the packet, sorry, I will get back to you. That's and okay. I'll put a link to put them the, for you. Uh, the link to your website with the that page yes. in, on the comments later, if you like. I will do that. Yep, yep. I, sh I meant to look to grab all four packs, and I actually forgot to bring them over, and had to get somebody to bring that one over for me. <laughs> <laughs> so this ink that I'm using now is just Barn Door Distress Ink because these flowers are a nice bright red. So I'm just putting that on, and you can, you know, when you're blending, if you've done blending before, you can make it as light or as dark as you want. And you can put a little bit more effort in if you want, you know, lighter parts and darker parts. But I tend to be a bit more simple and just go for it and don't stress about it too much. And however it comes out is however it turns out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just going over this to make it a little bit darker to try and get the bright red of the flowers in. So there's four different ones of these sets. So there's four different flowers okay. that you can choose from. And then each one has different sentiment stamps as well if you're a card maker or whatever to use. So when we take that stencil off, those bits are coloured. And if you have got, like, the advantage of die cutting at first, if you have got little white edges, you can just go over it and colour them in it as well. But generally you don't need to. And because you, you don't have to die cut it out, you could just do it on a sheet and then um, just use it flat without die cutting it as well. So that's that one done. Now, and the stencils are numbered as well. You probably won't see it on camera, but they, they are engraved on there with the number you don't necessarily have to do them in order but it is kind of easier yeah so this is stencil number two and once again it's just when I've stuck it down it hasn't quite gone back into place because it's got some thin bits so we're going to color these bits now and this is some of the leaves now the leaves have two different lots um, so they I'm using a light green and a dark green 
so the bundled sage distress ink and I'm using a bigger brush for this one just because that's what I had um, and bundled sage tends to be a lighter green so I'm making sure I'm putting heaps of ink on for that so that it's not too light when it comes out but again you know you can make them as light or as dark as you want when you're doing it I'm just blending a bit more so but you know, if you were doing this where it wasn't die cut, this would be you don't have to worry about staying inside the lines or anything, you just blend over the whole lot. So, your craft mat is magnetic, is it? Uh, the black one underneath the brown yeah. is magnetic, okay? So, the brown is just a normal non stick yeah, yes. craft sheet. Mm. Um, but I've just put that on top, I don't really know why, I don't really even need it there to be honest. <laughs> oh, no, because I've stuck this to it so that I can peel that up again. Okay, so stencil number two is done. And you can see here that um, the red goes either side yeah. and the leaf is green. So um, yeah, so the stencil just make it really easy. Stencil number three has some clouds. I'm not using those, but then it's also got these bottom two leaves. So I'm just gonna line that up. Obviously, if you just stamped it and hadn't die cut it first, then you wouldn't have to worry about moving these bits. But <laughs> because I die cut it first, they just need to go back into the right spot. So just blending over that. And once again, you can just sort of come back in and do the edges. And then we've got some shading to do on the leaves because they're two different tones so we're going to use the foss to finish it off with stencil four so this one here the stencil does look really weird when you look at it but when you lay it on when i get it around the right way it does just kind of half of each leaf okay mm. and that way you get the darker just on part of the leaf but you don't need to try and sit there and work out how to do it you just whack the stencil on now this is quite a dark green so i'm just going to tap that off first because I only want it fairly light over the top. Otherwise, it's too much contrast. Yep. But obviously, you can use whatever colours you've got, whatever inks you've got mm. to do that. Or, as I said, you know, you could use your markers through, your alcohol markers or water markers or watercolour pencils or, you know, whatever you've got to colour with. I probably wouldn't use something like stays on ink because they dry so quickly. You can't really blend oh, no. with those, but any of your ones that you can blend with. So that's those ones. Now I have got these two bits over the side and they are for the bottom leaves down here. This craft sheet was a little bitty and I've smudged, but that's all right. <laughs> um, so we'll just pop them down there. Doing great. <laughs> and again, just tap that off. Oh, it's probably a little bit dark. And that colour's over there. And we've coloured in our image. How quick and easy is that? And you can see there now we've got the um, the different shading in the leaves. Looks good. Um, mm -hmm. Without having to think about it, not having to worry about colouring in within the lines or anything like that. And then I've got here a stamp press. Now what I've done here is I've used a craft sheet again so that I can stick it to it without losing all the stickiness off the back. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I stamped the image on the craft sheet then I use one of the outside pieces that I had die cut from and I've stuck that over where the outline image was and because it's a craft sheet it, the image rubbed off again so I just rubbed it off. Now I've got that in place because it's on a stamp press it will stamp in exactly the same spot each time. So what I'm doing now is just carefully peeling this off the craft sheet which does just it's quite sticky this die cut and bottom stuff. <laughs> And then I'm going to just lay that back into that outline and that way you know your stamp image is going to line up directly on. You can stamp and then die cut out afterwards um, but I did find the die was a little bit hard to try and line up Yeah. and I just find this is an easier way to do it particularly if you want to do lots of them. So I used this in my class this afternoon which is why it's got lots of stamped images over it because we had a few accidents where the Jeep moved. You can just do it on paper as well, but because I wanted to be able to yeah. lift it up again, um, it's just a bit easier. So I'm just popping all those back into their little holes, making sure this is lined up 
looking for. See that in the corner there, so we know it's in exactly the right spot. And then I'll just bring it over. So I've already got the stamp on there, and I know it's all lined up. Stamping it out, and I'm just using watering can archival ink for that. And flipping that over and giving it a press. Now you don't have to push really hard when you're stamping. I see a lot of people, as Tim Holtz put it one day, trying to give CPR. You don't need to do that. Just give it time for the ink. Just mm -hmm. obviously give it a bit of a push, but you don't need to push super hard. And then you can lift it up and you can see this bit here, you might not see it on camera, but it hasn't quite stamped there. So you can just fold it back and give that a bit more of a push. And now it's fine. And then you can just peel it back out of there and it is ready to go on your project. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so really easy. It takes this half the time of colouring with watercolour pencils, watercolours or something. Yeah, yeah. And if you didn't want it die cut out, you know, where you'd have to try and stay in the lines and all that kind of stuff, the stencils then um, mean you don't colour outside the lines because you're already done. So oh, if you wow. see that there and the other bonus is it's all sticky, ready to put down. You don't have to get glue onto all the little bits to hold it all down and stuff as well. Wow, looks good. So, yeah, so that's my little demo for today. It went probably a little bit quick, but <laughs> that's all right. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so all those products are available on my website, except for the inks. I actually don't have any inks in stock, um, but I can get some if anybody needs some, but they're easy enough to get. Fantastic. Yeah. Helen says, I like that idea. I do too. I think it's a great idea. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. when I saw them, and they're only fairly new out. They've only been released in the last couple of months as well. So a lot of people haven't seen them yet. Um, I had shared a video online a little while ago of somebody else using them, but they kind of didn't just do a straight thing. They did some other stuff with them. Um, so I thought it would be a good thing to demonstrate and show people how to use and my ladies this afternoon that have done the class this afternoon have thought they were good too. So and they've been just eyeing them off. Your card and your, uh, that you, the project uh, yep. made again. Yep. So I've got a scrapbook layout that I used it on. And I've probably got the camera a little bit close to show all of that. Um, but you can see it up here. I've just put another one in. And just some Aussie photos. And then the cards. So just quite simple cards, just a basic background and paper. Mm. Um, but you didn't really need much with the flower because it fills up a big gap of it as well. So, and that one's just got some ribbon and some washi tape on there as well. Yeah. And then that one there. Excellent. It's just got some washi tape. So you could just put a sentiment on and the background yes. piece and that's done. Beautiful. So, yeah, nice well and easy. Done. Okay. We've got anything else to show us, Julie, or is that, that it for the moment? That's it for the moment. Yep. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to follow my Facebook okay, page, I'll I do get you sometimes. Okay. change but... your camera back around, and then we'll have a little chat. Okay. Yep. Sure. Oh, what a great idea those stencils are! Oh, easy. You won't have, don't have to worry about colouring anymore. Amazing. And here's Julie's just about ready. I think. We'll go back to Julie. There we go. <laughs> How are you, Julie? Yep. <laughs> that was good. good. Excellent. Well done with uh, that um, demonstration. It was good. I enjoyed it. I hope. Oh, good. <laughs> I hope everybody else did too. <laughs> I think, uh, we've got comments from people and they're saying they're loving it. So they love the, the idea. They love the matching sets and things. So, yeah. So just make sure yeah. you put, the, yeah, no, um, put your... The links onto the page, onto the comments, so that everybody knows where to find you. And um, we've got the link to your page from our page. <laughs> so yep. a link to our page, and then there are your links to your pages from there. So yeah. Okay. Yep. No, I will. So anything I'll else you would like shortly. to tell us? What project? What other no. products you have? And um, so I have a range of products. Um, I try and support most of the Australian suppliers. So I do have Couture Creations, uh, Uniquely Creative, Paper Rose, 
uh, Studio 73, which is a really small company up in Queensland, um, Coco Vanilla, which is also another small business in New South Wales. Um, I also have Three Quarter Designs, which are from over the ditch in New Zealand, uh, which have some beautiful products out. And then I have got some things that I do import from America as well, some different paper range of Harry product. Harry Potter products, um, which have been really popular. Um, so while I've still got those in stock, and then I do also have some yarns as well because I'm also a crocheter. So um, yeah, we've just got a oh, bit well, of variety that's there. That's fantastic. We wish you luck with your new business and hope it goes really, really well for you. And I believe you're going to be joining us for some, hopefully for some in-person events later in the year. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to. Um, yeah, so I'm hope I can't make sand down because that clashes with a few other things. But yeah, I'm hoping to get down to the Peninsula show, and because um, it's only an hour and a half from here, um, so it's close enough to get to. And for people down there as well, it's we're close enough. If you want to come up for a week, you can always stay in a local motel or something like that and make it like a retreat, which I do have people do sometimes. Yeah, fantastic. As well, fantastic. All right, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, thank you, Julie. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Great, thank you very much. No worries, thank you. And thanks everybody for watching for our last session for today. Wasn't that fantastic from Julie? I love those um, stencil die stamp sets. Oh my goodness, that's a mouthful. And thank you to you, our crafting community, for watching uh, all our shows today, all our sessions today. And um, please continue to leave comments and ask questions. Uh, Julie will pop into the comments and answer any questions you have. Um, there are more winter online craft show sessions coming up tomorrow, so make sure you tune into those. For the details of those, just go over to our Picture to Page website at frompicturetopage.com.au. And while you're there, catch up on all the upcoming in-person shows and join our mailing list. Thanks for joining us and bye for now. Uh, yeah.